you. Aloha. Uh, my name is Dana Pearls. I'm with Friends of the Earth US. I'm here from Berkeley, California. Just breathing in what you shared, and I apologize for switching the, the very beautiful mood uh, for one moment, but I hope that you really hold on to what you've just heard um, as I explain what is this technology that, that we're referring to. So overall, in general, genetic engineering is shifting. It's evolving, as any technology would. In general, what we're looking at is the next generation of genetic engineering, GMOs 2.0. And it's this merger of engineering and biology, some of which we've already seen over the years, and some of which we couldn't have imagined. And this technical evolution has raised concerns that go beyond, uh, beyond and, and, and uh, above the concerns from first generation GMOs. Um, in general, this is, this is not about transgenics anymore. So first generation GMOs, you take one uh, DNA from one organism and you insert it into another. And this is more about the engineering of a process. You might still be inserting genes, but it's not dependent on an organism anymore. You can fabricate uh, DNA from scratch, insert it, silence it, um, repeat it. So it's a deeper level of intervention into DNA from the very building blocks of, of nature. Uh, it's, a it's, a, it's a drive to design, patent, and profit from DNA at the industrial level. It's uh, predicted uh, to be at a $40 billion industry by, by 2020. So this is a, this is a um, Part of it is that this goes beyond plants, this goes beyond what we've known as agricultural crops and GMO crops. This is a technological platform that is looking to be applied to plants, insects, animals, humans, bioweapons, right? This is, a, this is a platform. And what we're gonna talk about today is one particular application uh, that is being brought to Hawaii as kind of the poster child and more, more or less the guinea pig. Um, so synthetic biologists draw from a whole variety of approaches. Synthetic biology is kind of what, what we call this next generation, this evolution of genetic engineering. And this can involve creating new DNA in order to reprogram or entirely create new life forms. And that again is you know, with silencing genes or deleting genes or adding genes. And I'll give you one example. Um, in the creation of new products, um, like vanilla or stevia, for example, one might know, I want to make vanillin, and you know what that molecule, the one molecule that you're going for is, and you can sit down ultimately at a computer, at a, at a DNA processor, so to speak, type out your computer code, print out the DNA uh, sequence that you want, insert it into yeast or microorganism like algae, let it live by feeding it sugar, and rather than squeezing out beer, it's going to squeeze out vanillin, or ginger, or sandalwood, or ginseng. And, and so ultimately, you created a factory from a microorganism to do whatever it is you, you're needing. Now, that's just one example. There's a whole suite of examples. Um, but ultimately, it's not about engineering the final product, but the entire life process. And so one particular example that brings us here today is the gene drive. This is one type of synthetic biology, and, 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 and it's one of the most powerful and extreme and, and I would say dangerous and concerning examples of synthetic biology. So imagine that by releasing a single fly into the wild, you could thereby alter all the flies on the planet, causing them to turn yellow, carry a toxin, or go extinct, just by releasing one organism. This is a gene drive. So this is a very controversial extinction technology that can permanently alter a species by releasing one bioengineered individual. And it, per it, per it perpetuates itself through future generations. So it's not just this generation, it's not just this room over here but for all future species, you have just completely, permanently altered it. And that might be to carry a certain trait, or it could be to drive it to extinction. Um, and the, the, so again, this idea is to spread traits through generations of species. Uh, and, and that's one of the proposals that's being brought here uh, to Hawaii, which is to um, 
take this Kulix mosquito that carries the avian malaria, which is connected to uh, the decline of the honey creeper. And if we could just drive this mosquito into extinction, then maybe that would solve the problem and the honey creeper would live. So it's, it's this idea of a, of a silver bullet by permanently removing a species from its existence. That's the idea, it doesn't actually exist. And I just wanna add uh, that this is not conventional breeding, which is some of the lines that industry feeds. Uh, these gene drives allow biotech companies to really engineer and manipulate life in a way that, that conventional breeding would ever do. Um, and I also just want to say that I know that there's a lot of media around the GMO mosquito that is being proposed for release in Florida. The GMO mosquito is different from the gene drive mosquito, which is raising all of this alarm here in, in Hawaii. Uh, the GMO mosquito seeks to reduce mosquito populations, but will require constant release. It doesn't permeate and perpetuate itself in a population. Um, whereas the gene drive mosquito, which is what we're talking about here, seeks to drive a lethal gene throughout an entire population uh, to kill it off. And just to say that this is not a containable uh, technology, right? This, the design is to not be contained, but to, but to spread. So on that awesome note, um, I'm, I'm gonna leave it there and then I'll return to, to help think about what are some of the concerns.